Hi, today we're going to discuss and show you how to install moisture sensors using the Netafim controllers. First and foremost, we want to make sure we disconnect the power to the controller. After that, we're going to remove the bottom panel. The tools you're going to need are a small screwdriver, a larger screwdriver, wire splices, and as far as at the controller, we'll be installing an SMI-232 using this ribbon cable and this power supply. I'll now show you how to how we're going to remove this bottom panel and install the SMI properly, connect the wires from the field that are going to the moisture sensor, and then we'll uh, show you which wires are going to be connected out in the field. Okay, I've removed the panel. Make sure the power is off. I removed the panel. And what I've done is now I placed the SM232 in here and there's four set screws with standoffs. I've mounted it that way. Here's our moisture sensor wire coming from the field, four different colors, and this fitting here is going to come off, and this is where we're going to install the four wires. This is our power source that's going to be connected to the SMI-232 down below. This is a transfer power through the SMI back to the controller, and this is going to be a ribbon cable we're going to connect to the top of the controller into the correct uh, serial port up on top. Okay, so now we're going to look at the ribbon cable that leaves the top right hand corner of the SMI-232 and plugs into this serial port up here. It's slotted so you can only put it one way. The power source that's transferring through our transformer through the SMI-232 is coming out here. That's going to plug into the connector here on the back of the controller. When we mount the controller, we want to be careful for the wires. Again, the power has been turned off. And as I mount it, I'll put a screw in here, okay? Now that I have the controller mounted with the two screws, the ribbon cable from the right hand corner is going up to the back of the controller. It's slotted, it can only fit one way. The power source from the top of the SMI-232 is going to, the, to supply power to the controller. The power supply from the transformer is plugging into the bottom left. The four wire path coming in, you'll notice I have R, Y, blue, B, and G. Red, yellow, blue, green. I want you to mark those. It's the first four terminals. And you'll notice that this terminal comes out after I install it with the wires connected. I'm ready to go out into the field and make sure that I follow that wiring path all the way back to the controller. So out in the field, you're going to use a special... Uh, two pair twisted shielded wire that's manufactured by Page Electric. Uh, the color coding on the wire path back to the controller is not consistent with the colors coming out of the moisture sensor. You have about 15 feet of moisture sensor wire from the actual moisture sensor itself. Uh, so it's very, it's pretty easy. You want to put red to red, blue to blue, black to green, and orange to yellow. Uh, back at the controller, it's going to be red, yellow, blue, green. So you have to maintain that consistency of the wiring throughout the whole network. The, deco the moisture sensors are daisy chained. So you, the furthest you can leave the four wire path is the distance of 15 feet, approximately what we provide with this wire. So you can't have any kind of splices in the four wire path out in the field. It has to be a daisy chain. So as you plug into a moisture sensor and leave the moisture sensor, with the four wire path, that's the only way to do it. So in summarizing what we've just done, we've installed an SMI-232 soil moisture interface board into the Netafim controller for the purpose of bringing moisture sensors back from the field to connect to the controller. At the controller, we've used a ribbon cable to bring it up to the serial port up on top of the back of the controller. The power supply for the controller is now coming out of the top of the SMI the power supply for the SMI is from the transformer. Your four wire path coming in to the controller is going to be make sure we maintain that we use the double jacketed twisted wire and we're going to have color coded red to red, blue to blue, yellow to orange and black to green. Back here we're going to be installing red, yellow, blue and green. When everything's done we're going to put the cover back on Program the controller, plug it in and program it, and we're all set to go.